Okay, this is a short instructional video about the blades on the MH1 and were how I add and remove blade tip weights. What I did, as you can see here, I have machined out and there's blade tip weight inside of the blade here, one pound weight tip. So it was a good place to drill and tap into and be able to remove blade tip weights. So what I do, to get it in there, is it's a little cap screw, Allen head screw that is screwed in there. Get it out. Tape is what coming out. There we go. You can see it's just a little uh, 1032 screw, stainless steel, keep it from corroding, what have you. But I put one of these in both blade tips as a standard, just a basic weight. And so when I have to add weight to one blade, according to the polar chart, which we'll go in there and look at in a second, I can go by uh, adding washers to this one, or showing down here, I have an assortment of bolts and different weights that I can add in there. And so I can use different combination of washers, spacers, I got different length bolts and what have you like that. And then also I have another package that's got lead that I made into little shapes like this to add you know, more weight if necessary. So what I do is I will get my trusted calculator scale here. I get the thing to come off. It's just a very basic scale. And I will just, you know, if I need to add 2.8 grams, the first thing I would do is weigh the bolt. Oop, let's turn it around. And that gives me the basic weight of just the bolt itself. So if I got to add, let's say, 2 grams to that weight right there, I can do one of two things. I can just add something like that. You don't go until I find just the right weight, you know, with different spacers and what have you. And until I come up with the 2 grams or whatever I want to add to this, it will be you know, 5.10. And it could be a combination of washers, whatever needs to be done, you know, until I come up with the weight and so on and so forth. And then of course, you know, again, it's just whatever comes up, you've got to add to it to make it come up the weight you want. So I'm gonna put this back in here. And what we had to do originally is you couldn't, they had no provision for the blade tip weights. And what's, what's really, now what we had to do originally is up here on the outboard blade bolt, which just a bolt doesn't hold any uh, centrifugal loads. It's all done through a pin and this bolt on the forward. But this bolt here, you would have to add the weights to here to balance the blade. Now this blade being just called, this could use a nominal, it's 10 foot long. Um, if I had to add two grams at the blade tip, I would have to add 10 times the weight, so it would be 20 grams I would have to add here. And if you had to do a lot of weight change, which usually is not so, you know, you could have an astronomical amount of weight here. And of course it means another bolts and so on and so forth to get enough grips here for the, the proper insulation. I didn't like doing that, it's just added a lot of extra unneeded weight could be done at a low mount at the blade tip. So hence the reason why I came up with the blade tip mod. And it works out really well, and we can keep it, uh, you know, the mass overall weight down to a minimum. And also on the drilling and everything was done on a very specific thing, the cord line of the, the blade, of course eight inch, but the center of gravity is going to be at a certain point here. And I made sure to add that weight on the center of gravity so I wouldn't affect the uh, cord balance on it. A real quick thing, you can see where I marked some, the center line of the blade here. And when I do the tracking, I use you know, a combination of either you know, red and black, some two opposite colors. So when I do my tracking, it marks the tracking flag when it's touched up here. And at least it's you know, a transfer mark and I can see you know, where the, the tracking of the blades are, you want them you know, to be exact on. And of course, I'm going to do it the final in hover. And now I'm marking the blades. And I'm going to put a reflective 
tab on here so that the accelerometer's optic timer here can pick it up. I'll put this in alignment with the sensor so the optic sensor can shoot a signal up to it and it'll tell the balancer the rpm and also the position of the blade the front piece there is the accelerometer that's the name of my balancer the nine of vibe this is an old one so i had i don't have a charge I'm going to put 9 volt batteries in it. The first thing we've got to do is we've got to do the track because balance does not affect track, but tracking will affect balance. So it's always the first thing you've got to get the blades in track. And tracking is mean as they're flying in the same plane. So you don't have a high blade or low blade. Though in forward balance, we may have to split the track in order to get a balance of forward flight, which is very common. I'm gonna pause here for a second for a message from our sponsors. This is a device to uh, turn the balance wrong when the time comes. The knees just plug into the sensor receptacles in the back. It's actually the top of it. Most of them are more positive connections. I've had them come loose one time before. This is plug in. We can turn it on real quick if you want to do this. Let's see it'll come up. It'll come up. But it'll say no tack because it's getting no reading from any of the sensors. That's all it'll say while it's alive. And then if I you know, punch that button right there when it's alive, it'll take a reading. And then I can hit it again and it'll stop it when it does an average over a three second time frame. And of course I got a little couch here that the thing will sit into. And I can put it right on the leg. So you leave them defueled all the time whenever you're letting it sit? Absolutely. Number one, and also run it out of gas so the car bears don't get all gummed up. It's just standard premium from the gas station. You prefer a carbureted engine? For yeah, and for this setup, yes, because it's a uh, fuel injection. Um, the way the throttle bodies are, that would be in interference with our tail boom. So when I put the angel together, I'm going to put a 130 horse fuel motor in it. Because I have a little more clearance and I can deal with the uh, fuel injection. I see that space you're talking about with the tail boom. It's pretty close there. Indeed. Yeah, the way the throttle bodies, instead of carburetors, come straight out, the throttle bodies face upward. And interferes with the injectors and all that in this area right there. Because these are heated carburetors, so we don't have to worry about car bias. And you don't lose no power because carburetors are heated. You don't have to put in hot air through the carburetors like on a Robinson, which I hate. Okay, we're using the old school flag method. Um, I'm going to have to mark the outside here because there's no good way to put a tracking tab or some tab on it with a reflector so I can look at it do the tracking. So what I do is I take a black and I go through the center of the blade right here and this I'm going to have to heat these ones up because they're not making enough mark. It's actually chocolate but it should still work. You can't even get good uh, crayons nowadays. It does not want to transfer too well. It's all going to hit right here in this part anyway so that's I just started from the back side. All right, I'm going to bring the other blade around. Let's just see how it does. I should be able to get a good enough reading out of this. Thank you. Yeah, 
it still does not want to transfer. What is this device you got here? This is the tracking flag, is what we call it. And you're going to rub this against the plane of the blades about right here. You come into them, you hold it like that, move 90 degrees into the plane of the blades, and just barely touch them. It'll go like that, and that's it. It'll make a mark. Either you know, they're together to make the same line, or if they're apart, you make a separate line. Okay. What you're going to be doing, I say the imaginary plane of blades is pretty level, I think, right there, isn't it? Here's pretty close. You're going to walk into them from over here, out here. Spread your hands apart so you got a better thing. This has got to face toward you so you don't have that part there. You just walk into it. And the blades, you'll see the plane. And you'll just go just like that and touch them. You always want to turn your blades 90 degrees. And from the pilot standpoint, that way you know that you're blades are tied down. You always tie the blades on a two blade forward and aft. And one thing you always want to make sure that you uh, get the gas cap on. <clears throat> hey Caleb? Yo. You're gonna have to probably stand to the side because you can't see the windshield is dirty. But when I get ready, it's like I gotta watch the RPMs and all that. And this and that. And I'm gonna nod my head, and that's when you need to walk in because I'm gonna have to hold the RPM steady. You gotta go real slow into it, just tap them. And of course, you went up too high, I think. Oh, you're right there. You should have hit them right in here. Let's see if we can't put a little bit more stuff on it. For some reason, this thing's reading all kind of bizarre code, too. Showing 720, 354, and all kinds of weird numbers.
top mark was the first round that you hit it and it looked like they were dead on. The second round there it looks like they're dead on, but we're going to check it one more time. So that's also the reason why you got to make sure this is vertical, mm -hmm. perfectly square, 90 degrees to the blade when you put this on there. Right. I could actually do pretty good because I've done it. But So what was our measurement that you read off the machine? You have 0.43 ifs at 191 clock angle. Well, you want to be down between 0.1 or lower on the ips, and we're at 0.43, which is not horrible for start out. chart you know for helicopter 417 Papa Tango this is the hover balance chart and that's what I'm using for ground balance uh, but you can see the different boxes here again for the different aspects of what needs to be done head shift main rotor weight tips tip weights or main rotor pitch length the first one uh, with the uh, microvibe uh, balancer came with 0.43 at 191 clock angle so my solution was 2.9 grams added to blade B. The reason I come up with that is because you look at where it's at. Right there is 0.43 at 191. And that brought it within the box of main rotor tip weights. And you mark it, and then you come up, go up to here. And um, I call it 2.9 because it was kind of in between these two marks. You really can't see it for sure. So it's just that's where some of the black magic, the guesswork. So I did 2.9 grams. So I added it to blade B because it's uh, add to blade B or remove from blade A. I didn't have no weight, so it's just static right now. So I went ahead and added that. We ran it again, and it came up with 0.28 um, ips at uh, clock angle 154. And I went ahead and marked that right there. You can see we're moving inboard, but we moved over in the clock angle. That brought me over to the main rotor pitch lengths. And this being a ground balance, I just wanted to get it close enough so that when I do do it in hover flight, it is going to be a, you know, not just horrendously out of balance. It's still pretty far out, but you know, we're shooting for that point right there or anywhere in the circle. And actually by regs, it needs to be 0.1 or less. It's considered a good balance. I like to go a little bit lower. I like to go to 0, 0.0 something. So anyways, I stopped at this point right there, once we moved from there to there, and I didn't want to do no pitch length change because the, we did the track on it, and it's perfectly in track. So it's, it brings it to a point where we need to do it in hover flight now, which will be the next step after I get the airworthiness on it to legally fly. And after we do that, I will continue on balancing and then get it you know, within that point one into that area and you know, hopefully a little closer in then. And then after, once we get the hover balance done, we're going to go into what's called forward flight. You can see we've got a head shift, main rotor pitch length, and main trim tab adjustment. There's no more weights. Um, and also we'll be you know, verifying the track and everything in the hover. And you got to remember, um, balance does not affect track, but track affects balance. So, you know, we may have to, in the end, have to um, break the... Uh, the track a little bit, split it into an order to do a final tune on it for a forward flight. 
But again, we're going to be using you know, pitch links or trim tabs. I will never do a head shift, but what I do is I have a place that I add to the blade hub um, cheap plates that we can actually add weights, and that will compensate for the head shift. So far, I've never had to do a head shift on it. Um, as long as you set up the head and everything correctly, it's always just been pitch links or trim pad. Okay, to further ado, until we get into forward flight and upper flight.